Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna be talking about all things first trimester, how I found out I was pregnant, um, what my first symptoms were. I just wanted to talk about this because whenever I was pregnant, um, when I first found out, the first thing I did was go to YouTube and look up like what I'm supposed to be feeling, like and what I'm feeling normal. So that's basically what I'm gonna do today. I have a book here. My friend Ashley got me this. This was basically to document how many weeks I am, um, what my symptoms were, if I had any cravings that week. I filled it out every week up until about 10 weeks, I think 10 weeks. And then I tried to take Polaroid pictures of like your, my bump every week, but I only have like this one and another one. I only took two, so that's great. Wrote down a lot of my symptoms to help so that I remember. So I have a couple notes in my phone as well of some first symptoms. Okay, so how I found out that I was pregnant was that I just missed my period. I'm never really late on my period, like ever. So that was the first sign. We basically talked about it and we're like, okay, if I wake up tomorrow and I still don't have my period, then we'll take a test. The next day comes along and I still don't have it. So we go to the store, we buy a test, and then we originally were gonna take it at the end of the day because we had errands to run that day. And then we just got too excited. So we ended up going home and taking the test right away. So I took the first one and then I walked, we walked our dog around the block just because I was like anxious while we were waiting for the results. And then I came back, we looked at it, and it was positive. Um, so we were so excited, and then I took the other one. The pack that I came that I bought came with two, a digital one and a, like a rapid one. So I took the digital one first, the one that said like yes or no. After that one said yes, then I took the rapid one, and that one came up almost immediately that I was pregnant. At this point, I, I'm assuming that I'm only about four weeks. Um, four weeks pregnant at this point, so still super early. You can't see a doctor about your pregnancy until you're at least eight weeks. And I found out at four weeks. So I had a whole month basically of anxiety and second guessing if I was pregnant or not. Cause obviously you don't feel pregnant other than like the symptoms that you feel. Um, but everyone is different. So some people have mild symptoms. Some people have crazy, like a lot of symptoms. It's just weird waiting that whole month. Before I got the positive pregnancy test, there was a couple things that was weird to me. Um, every morning before I went to work, I would drink these little smoothies, um, but they were like smoothies that I bought at the store. So they were, they were like strawberry banana smoothies, and I would drink those kind of for breakfast like every day because I went to work super early, um, so I wasn't hungry for a full meal. So I would drink a smoothie on the way to work, and then one day, I think it was maybe a week or two before I tested positive, very weird. I noticed like a metallic taste, like it's hard to explain, but it just like was the taste of metal when I was drinking it. And I asked Juan and I was like, try this drink and tell me if this tastes weird to you. I just thought that like it, the smoothie tasted weird or like it was a bad batch or something. And he tasted it and he's like, it tastes normal, like it tastes fine. And I was like, that's weird. I was like, you don't have like a metal taste? And so he was like, no. And I was like, okay, that's weird. So I like Googled it. And that was like a symptom, a symptom of like early pregnancy or I have seen now that other people have had that same thing where they like kind of taste metal. So that was like a clue. Another thing is right before I was expected to get my period, I had a little bit of spotting, but it was brown. I'm hoping this is not TMI, but I just want to explain this to people because I had no idea what this was and I was like, what is this? I was just very confused until I looked it up and stuff and I had a little bit of spotting and it was brown, but it wasn't red. It was a completely blood. So as soon as I saw that, I'm thinking, oh, like I started my period. Um, but it was very light too, like very, very light. It was like that for like maybe a day or two and then it went away. And so that was weird. And I was like, that, that wasn't my full period. Like I knew it wasn't. 
and it wasn't red it was brown so it was like very weird to me and so once i told juan that he looked it up we both looked it up and then he was we were talking about how that was what i know now to be implantation bleeding um so that happens i don't know if it happens to everybody but now i know it's a very common thing and it it happens basically and so once we looked that up then i was like okay this is weird so we were anticipating like me starting my period so we were waiting for me to start basically to see what was up to see if like something was going on or we were just like waiting to see if i was going to get it or not so then that happened the metallic thing happened um i was feeling like really tired all of a sudden but i was working two jobs at the time so that didn't really like it wasn't like alarming that I was tired. I just figured I was just like working a lot or just like doing a lot and my body was tired. And also I was really hungry. Um, before I tested positive, I noticed that I was like, I would like finish my meal and then still be hungry for dessert or like still want to eat more or like being more hungry throughout the day. So that was like another sign. Other than that, those were the only symptoms that I had before I tested positive. And then once I missed my period and took the test, then everything else started after that. So my week four and five, my symptoms, I wrote those in my phone because I didn't have that um, book yet. So the first thing I did the day that I found out I was pregnant was I ordered prenatal vitamins, like I overnighted them. And I ordered the ritual ones those are like pills. So I started taking those the next day after being pregnant because I knew that that was what I had to do. Other than that, didn't know what else I had to do. It was just, I made an appointment the next day as well um, to see the doctor. And then that's when she told me that we have to wait till I'm eight weeks, obviously because it's too small and they can't see anything. So yeah. So week four and five, I wrote no symptoms. Um, I didn't have any, like I wasn't throwing up, I didn't have nausea yet, just had the regular maybe feeling tired a little bit, but like I said, that didn't really, like I couldn't tell if that was a pregnancy symptom or just me working two jobs symptom, so I just wrote no symptoms for week four and five. Week six, I wrote tired, hungry, and slight nausea. Around this time is when I started to feel a little nauseous. Nausea is not like a thing for me. I'm not one to feel nauseous. I don't have a weak stomach. I wasn't throwing up at this time. Still to this day have not thrown up, thank God, because I was dreading the throwing up part, but everybody's different. My sister, um, she has a little girl. She also told me that she was not very sick throughout her pregnancy too, so I don't know if it's a genetic thing because my mom said that she was really sick with me, so I don't know. I just happen to not be that sick. Week seven, I have extreme nausea, very tired, sore boobs, switched prenatal pills to gummies. Um, so yeah, that's another thing. I guess this week I was feeling extremely nauseous. Um, I remember that I didn't get hungry anymore. I would just get nauseous and that's how I knew that it was time for me to eat something. Um, I'm thankful that I could even eat anything being nauseous because I know a lot of people can't um, and that makes them throw up if they eat and all this stuff. So I'm thankful that I was even able to get food down being as nauseous. So my boobs started to get a little bit sore and hurt. This was new to me because when I would get my period, sometimes people have this as a symptom, just as a period symptom, and I never had this before. So this was a new thing for me. Um, yeah, just sore boobs. I switched my prenatal pills from pills to gummies. So I got those ritual pills, like I mentioned. Um, those are a really good brand. I've read and heard a lot of good things about them, but they have kind of like a lemon taste to cover, I don't know if it's the fish oil, to cover something. But the taste was making me nauseous and every time that I took the pill, I had to take it, I had to take two every day. Every time that I took it, it would make me want to throw up. So I couldn't do pills like the capsules anymore. I just was like, I can't do it. Towards towards the end of that week, I remember taking them and like gagging when I was taking them. So I was like, okay, I can't do this. I need to take gummies, something that's a lot easier for me to stomach and even just swallow without having a hard time. So I ended up getting the, um, I think the brand is Ollie. They sell them at Target. 
Um, they still have really good ingredients in those. So I take two of those every day and then that's good. And I also wrote ginger hard candies helped me with nausea. I have a couple friends who have kids and I asked them, one of my friends was really sick with her daughter and she told me that Jolly Ranchers helped her. She said that she like survived on Jolly Ranchers. But to me, I was scared to try that because I felt like the sugar would make me sick or make me more nauseous. Um, and then she also told me ginger, but she couldn't do ginger because she hated ginger. So she um, told me, she suggested some candies that they had, like ginger candies that they sold at Target. So I tried those and I don't mind the taste of ginger. So I actually liked them. They were good and they helped a lot with my nausea. So that was good. I would take, if I was feeling nauseous and I had eaten, like if I ate food and I was still nauseous, then I would take one of those and it would like help a little bit. For week eight, I have very sore boobs, nauseous, no throwing up, heartburn and indigestion. So this is when the heartburn and indigestion started. I can't really explain much about that. It's just an uncomfortable feeling and then being nauseous. My boobs got a little bit more sore this week, so <coughs> that was fun. I had another friend who was pregnant at the same time and everyone kept telling me like, oh, wait till week nine, you're gonna be so sick. Wait till week 10, 11, like you're gonna be so sick, it's gonna come. So I was like waiting for that to come and kind of like preparing myself to be throwing up and to be so sick and it's kind of annoying. You can't really listen to other people and their experiences because every person is different, everybody's body is different. So what this person might experience doesn't mean that you're gonna experience it. So I feel like I was not scared, but I like hate throwing up. That's like something that I try to avoid doing at all costs. So I was like worried that I was gonna be like so sick throwing up and then you just hear some people who don't have the best experience with pregnancies like in the beginning and how they're so sick that they can't even eat and they're losing weight. So like all this stuff is going through my head. But luckily for me, I wasn't that sick. So I'm very thankful that it was just nausea and heartburn and digestion. It's still uncomfortable and being nauseous is not fun at all because you like don't still don't want to do anything. It's like sometimes when you're nauseous, you just wish you would throw up so the nausea would go away, but I'm just thankful that I didn't throw up, so it's fine. Oh, I have my weight too. I was 120 at week eight. At this point, I'm 20, what is, oh my, I'm 24 weeks and five days, so I'm about to be 25 weeks tomorrow. I'm about 140, so I've gained about 20 pounds already. Um, so yeah, and for week nine, I have nauseous every day, low energy some days, sore, sore boobs, need new bralettes, work pants don't fit anymore, <laughs> very bloated, lots of gas. Yeah, this is the truth, the harsh truth about being pregnant. You get very gassy, very bloated. It's like a constant bloat. Like, you know, when you are like on your period and you just feel like uncomfortable and big and gross, like that's just how I was feeling like just very bloated. Um, at this point, my work pants didn't fit anymore. So I kept having to like size up or unbutton them. That was the only way I was able to get like comfort. I wrote knee new bralettes because my bras weren't fitting me anymore. I needed to get some like, Target has a good brand. It's called Auden or something. I'm actually wearing one right now. It's a bralette, um, it's, they're seamless. So there's no wire, it's like very comfortable. So I bought those in like a medium, um, just size up so that you have some room and then nauseous every day. I'm assuming my nausea got a little bit more, but still no throwing up, thank God. And then low energy, same thing. I was working two jobs at this point. I ended up leaving one of the jobs because I just couldn't do it. It was, I was very low energy. I didn't have the energy or the strength to do that job um, or two jobs. So I ended up leaving one job, but they were really nice about it. The owner of where I worked was pregnant also, so she understood, um, which I'm super thankful for because had it been a man or 
someone else who wasn't pregnant, they wouldn't really understand. So I'm just very thankful that everything played out the way it did. For week 10, all I have is nausea. I remember by this week that I was starting to feel a little bit better, like my nausea wasn't as bad. My nausea was starting to go away a little bit to where I would just get nauseous if I was hungry. Um, and then I knew I needed to eat and then it would kind of go away. So it was manageable at this point. It wasn't anything that I had to like be in bed over. Also, I had in the back of my head, like the things that other people had told me like, oh, like you're gonna get so sick, you're gonna get whatever. I had another friend too, who was three weeks ahead of me and she was saying that she started throwing up at like 13 or 14 weeks. And I was like, what? Still like in my head a lot, just based on what people told me. But I remember at some point, maybe around week eight, nine or 10, I had a little bit of cramping. Um, it was very slight, it wasn't anything painful, but that's really normal throughout your first trimester. If it gets to, if your cramping gets to be to where it's more painful, um, then definitely talk to your doctor. But I remember it was like mild cramping for me and I, and I was like texting my friends who had had kids before and I'm like, is this normal? Like, and they're like, oh yeah, like it's normal. And I asked my doctor as well. Um, if it was normal. So as you get past your first trimester and you're a little bit further along, if you get cramping, it's probably because you're dehydrated. Um, making sure that you're hydrated is really, really important. My doctor really stressed that to me. We moved um, in the last month or two. So I was already past my first trimester, but there was a day where I was just like doing a lot, not drinking as much water and I was cramping. Um, not crazy bad, but I was having cramps and I mentioned it to her and she basically said that's why because I need to be making sure that I'm drinking a lot of water. She told me to try to drink a gallon a day. Um, that might be a little excessive. If you can do it, great. I did it for a little bit until my gallon water bottle broke. Um, so now I fill up my Stanley like two or three times at least. Then I feel like I'm good. I also don't drink coffee. I was not a coffee drinker before. That isn't something that I had to get rid of. So I don't drink caffeine. All I drink is water, unless I have like a Coke or something, like if we go out to dinner. Um, but my doctor told me that any Coke or any caffeine that you drink, you need to drink double that amount of water. You're allowed to have caffeine. You're allowed to have 200 milligrams of caffeine a day. So if you are a coffee drinker, you can still have your coffee, but just make sure it's under 200 a day or at 200 a day. I'm trying to think if there was anything else that stood out to me. I'm very thankful that my pregnancy has been going very smooth. I haven't had any issues, any pains, no bleeding, nothing like that. I've heard stories from other girls um, on what they experience. And like I said, everybody is different. So you can't base your experience on anybody else. Just make, make sure that you are drinking as much water, taking your prenatals every day, um, walking and making sure you get some type of exercise, whether it's walking around the block or something every day is really helpful. At my job, I do a lot of walking, so that's good when I work. And when I'm not working, I walk my dog twice a day. But yeah, Pregnancy is a learning journey for everyone who goes through it for the first time. Even if it's your second time, like your second pregnancy can be way different than your first, especially if you're having a girl or boy. I'm having a little girl. That's why I was for sure that maybe I was having a boy because I wasn't as sick. Cause everyone says like, if you're having a girl, you get so sick. So you just have to take everyone's advice with a grain of salt because everybody is different and everyone has their own things. So as long as you're making sure that you are doing your own research. I also bought some books, some baby books, um, kind of like a what to expect when you're expecting books. My friend got me books just so I can like do real research and not just listen to people on TikTok. Watching people on YouTube is is helpful for me because it helps me to understand what they experienced. And so I know if I'm experiencing something like that, like a new symptom, like heartburn or something that is not normal for me, then I know that that has to do with pregnancy. The pregnancy apps help you a lot. I really love the what to expect when you're expecting app. The flow app is a good one too. Those are the two that I use. As far as cravings for me, I didn't have anything crazy. Like I wasn't craving 
like pickles and ice cream or like anything like that. There was a point in time where I really craved noodles, like Kobe noodles, ramen noodles. Like I just went through like a noodle phase. I've gone through like a green bean phase. I've gone through pickles, but I feel like pickles is a common one. Like not pickles with anything, just like pickles in general. Snow cones, like icy drinks, but it's also the middle of summer right now. So I think that has something to do with it. It's really hot where I'm at. It's just like random things that like whatever sounds good. I remember craving Chipotle like so bad one day and I hadn't had Chipotle like in years before that. So it's just random things that will pop in my head. And even now, I don't get like crazy cravings now, but like the other day I was craving an icy, like just things like that. A lot of fruit. I craved a lot of fruit. Um, PB and J's and yogurt parfaits. I ate those for breakfast every day for like a couple months. I was obsessed with those. In the very, very beginning of my pregnancy, I was like obsessed with smoothies, um, like strawberry banana smoothies. And then one week I just stopped drinking them and then I haven't had one since. So my cravings were just like weird like that. They don't always, your cravings aren't always gonna be like ridiculous things. Sometimes they might be. So as far as my symptoms, once I got to week maybe like 13, I was like just out of my first trimester. Last week of the first trimester is your 13th week and then your 14th week starts your second trimester. At week 12 and 13, my symptoms started to lessen a little bit and I wasn't feeling as nauseous. I started to feel somewhat normal again. I was getting a little bit of energy back. I didn't get it back right away in the second trimester, but it comes back eventually and, and you start to feel more like yourself. So if you're really sick right now and you're in the, your first trimester, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You will feel back to normal. I remember once I was in the really, really nauseous phase, I was like, is this ever gonna end? Excuse me. I was like, is this ever gonna end? Like, I hate being nauseous. It's just, it's so uncomfortable for me and for anybody. That will all um, go away and you'll feel a little bit more back to normal. I'm in my second trimester now. I don't know when, like what week is your third trimester but I feel like I have to be either halfway or close to the end of my second trimester. I'm not sure. But I've heard that once you hit your third trimester, some of that stuff starts to come back. So I'm not looking forward to that, but I'm thriving right now in my second trimester, so that's great. That's pretty much it for the first trimester recap. I just wanted to go over all of like my symptoms, what I was feeling before I was pregnant, how I found out and all of that. I hope that it was helpful to anybody who's watching this who's pregnant or know somebody who's pregnant. Videos like these were super helpful when I was pregnant because obviously in the beginning, it's so early you can't really tell people. So you're kind of like sitting with that um, with you and your partner basically and you don't really know what to expect. I'm a first time mom, never been pregnant before so this was all a learning experience even to the implantation bleeding, like I didn't know what any of that was. I also didn't know that you had to wait until you were eight weeks before you could see a doctor. So there's a lot of things that you learn along the way. I hope that this helps somebody out there who has questions and is scared or they don't really know what to expect or they feel alone, you're not alone. I hope that that gives you comfort. That's pretty much it. So I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching. Leave me a comment um, if you are pregnant or if you're going through the same thing. Make sure you like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in my next video.